Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to get the detail of a job failure in SQL Server. Let's say that you have a job on SQL Server agent and it failed for some reason and you are looking to know that reason in detail. In this demo, we'll be looking at that reason using SQL Server Management Studio graphic user interface and using T-SQL script. We'll also be looking at various options for storing job history and job history is what basically tells us what was the cause of failure of that job. So let's go in SQL Server Management Studio. Here's my SQL Server Management Studio. In order to get to the jobs, you need to expand SQL Server Agent and click on Jobs. You will see all the job in Object Explorer detail. So I have three jobs in this demo. So right here is what uh, I'm going to run this job and see if it fails. It This job has two steps, one and two, right here. First step does all database info. And second step right here, as you can tell from the name, it call another job. So we're going to go ahead and click on start. And job has failed. So we're going to go ahead and click on execution of job and it guides us to go and look in the history of the job. So we're going to go ahead and click OK, close and right click on that job and go view history. As you can see that this job has been failing for a while. So all the red axes right here seems like it, it does show us that it failed and green check bar right here shows us that this job has succeeded. So we're going to go ahead and click the latest one. If you, whatever the date you're looking for, you need to click expand that particular de uh, uh, date. We're going to go ahead and expand this. As you can see right here, uh, there, this job has two steps. First step succeeded successfully. Second step right here, up here, that's failed. In order to, if you click on just the job, it'll tell you the detail right here. On, in selected row detail it'll tell you what date the log and also the job name and the step name as you can tell right here the last step to run was step two and step one is basically right here is completed we're not worried about that so we're looking into the step two that it that is failed so right here is the detail of step two and executed by the user right here and right here is the reason so the reason in this particular demo is the specified at job name backup all db underscore two does not exist so we need to look into the step two detail that what exactly the step two was doing so we're going to go ahead and close this right click on the job go to the properties click on steps and go to the second step right here and click on add it as you can see right here this job what this job is doing running a transactional SQL a script and right here is running a store procedure start job and it's starting the job name backup all DB underscore two however the history told us that this job really doesn't exist right here backup all DB underscore two so we can go ahead and minimize this and look into the jobs right here we do have a backup all db but we don't have a job named backup all underscore db as our error suggested right here we're gonna go and view the history i'm sorry view the history right here says that this job underscore two doesn't really exist so we know that that job doesn't exist if it's not um, as we saw in our step that is not calling on another remote SQL server if it's not showing any remote SQL server name that means that it's on local and we checked on that local SQL server that job doesn't exist so this is one way to find out the detail of the job that why the job failed the other job is using SQL's uh, other way to find out why the job failed is SQL Server script. So you can go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and get my script. And as you can see what I'm using right here are two tables in MSDB database right here. And that is sys job history 
and sys jobs. I'm basically joining these two tables to find the particular information that I'm looking for. Right now I'm interested in the job name and the date when it failed. You can go ahead basically look into um, if I do top one asterisk and right here top one asterisk it'll tell me I'll go and comment these <clears throat> it will basically give me all the column names in both these tables right here so I can find all the information that I'm looking for by joining these two tables which I did right here so right here I put the job name backup underscore but I'm not interested in that job I'm interested basically in this job that is failed so I'm going to go ahead and put right here like demo so any job that starts with demo it should give me the history on right here I'm going to go ahead and forth zero six this is the month right here in uh, the run date and this is basically the day so we're gonna go ahead and select and execute this as you can see right here it has given us all the date uh, today's date every time this job failed so if we're looking for the uh, step one is this step two is this right here and if you can expand this you will see the same information that specified at job name right here backup all db underscore two does not exist so this is another way that you can find the detail of the job the next one thing i wanted to show you quickly that if you right click on or if you click right here on job activity monitor double click on that and you will see right here you have much more options uh, on the status base right here the jobs that failed the last time right here it shows that uh, this job has failed so you can double click basically on that job and look at the steps right here and last run outcome is failed so this is another way basically that you can look at the different um, uh, options of the jobs to find out what what causes uh, the failure uh, of that particular job and um, let's look at different options of the job if you let's say that you have a complicated job so we're gonna go ahead and click on this job this was very easy job it has only two steps so let's say that you have a complicated job and you would like to know and uh, basically also the retention of this SQL Server agent job is a couple of days and you would like to know you what would that is your critical job and is complex job and you would like to know basically to keep it uh, what happened seven days ago so you can basically define your own retention if you right click on the job go to the properties and go to the steps and go right here on the second step and click on add uh, add it and click on advance you get an option that where you would like to store the history of this particular step or run of this particular step so we have various options right here the log to a table you have an option you can go ahead and log the history outcome of that tape uh, um, outcome of that uh, particular job into a, a, a log table and right here is include steps output in history so whether the job succeed or failed is going to output everything in the history I wouldn't recommend uh, clicking this option in production server because your history table may go haywire if if you really click this option because this is going to basically go ahead and uh, put everything in the history whether it's a successful or it's a failure so better option for production system is that you can go ahead and define your output file and every time this job runs uh, the execution history whether it's successful or failure will be in that particular file and then you can go ahead and uh, uh, delete that file based on your own retention period let's say that you wanted to keep the history for 20 days then it's going to go ahead and basically put all the um, uh, right here let's say I'm going to go ahead and job name is 
right here in the data this is my folder my job this is my file name and if I do that if I say append the output to an existing file is going to append it if I want that my job should basically go ahead and write a new file every time then it's going to go ahead if you click on this right here is going to keep the history of that 20 days whatever that you wanted to do you can go ahead and do it that way and this is much more in my opinion if you wanted to keep uh, a job history longer than uh, seven days this is a better option that you will go ahead and uh, put in your own uh, output file and you can explore that particular file later on uh, whether that job failed or successful and all the execution history of that job so basically uh, this is what I wanted to show you uh, first we saw SQL Server Management Studio get graphic user interface to go in the uh, job history detail to find out what was the cause and then we looked at the T-SQL script you can manipulate T-SQL script any way you want to basically what I'm using is just those two tables uh, job history table and uh, assist job history table and sys jobs and right here various options for storing job history which you can do in uh, log and also you can have your own file to put the history and you can define the retention on that particular file and I hope this video helps.